Thank you very much for tuning in. So I've got a clip here from an interview that the Daily Telegraph did with Jordan Peterson um, several weeks ago. It's only a short excerpt, uh, three or four minutes, and mainly because he mentions atheists and he also uh, talks about uh, faith in certain principles. So let's go and have a listen and then I'll comment afterwards. I want to talk about them and how they coped with some of the most terrible experiences. Now, obviously, you're not you're not in a gulag, you're not you're not in Auschwitz, so you know there's this kind of different level, isn't there? But um, what do you do when you know that things aren't going to get better? So let's say you're a Soviet dissident and there's just no hope. Do you survive? Do you fight? What do you do in that situation? Well, everything you do in life is a matter of faith. And why would I say that? You know, the atheist materialist types, the skeptics will say, well, faith just means that you believe in things that aren't there. It's like, that isn't what it means. That's, that's a 13-year-old critique of religious belief. A, why, a smart 13-year-old's critique of religious belief. It means that you, you stake your fate on some set of propositions. Now, the thing is, is that you do stake your fate on some set of propositions because you have to act in spite of your ultimate ignorance. So in the final analysis, you have to move forward in ignorance. And you move forward in ignorance by assuming the utility of either a stable set of principles, or, and they, there can be alternatives, or by wavering. Well, here's one principle. Say what you need to save your skin in the moment or to gain advantage. And that means that you have faith in the power of deception. It means that you have faith in the power of the lie. Right? Right. Well, we know who the eternal ruler of the kingdom of the lie is. Or you can have faith in the truth. And that means, to have faith in the truth means that you act in accordance with the assumption that whatever happens, if you tell the truth, is by definition the best thing that could possibly happen. And that means independent of the short-term consequences for you. Now, you're stuck with that anyways, because if you decide to lie, you're making the assumption that escaping scot-free or obtaining an undeserved advantage will pay off over the long run, all things considered. And you have no evidence for that at all, you know, and everyone knows this. You can do something stupid to get out of a jam and get away with it, but the chickens come home to roost, and virtually everyone knows that. So you're going to evince faith in one strategy or another, or you're going to lie sometimes and tell the truth other times, and I wouldn't recommend that at all, because all that does is make you one confused person. So you're playing both ends against the middle. When Christ comes back in the book of Revelation, he says the worst form of hell is reserved for the people who play both ends against the middle, who sit on the fence. Right, so that's worth knowing. And so, if you are wise and you have any sense and a certain degree of courage, then you say what you have to say and you you let the devil take the hindmost. And so that's what you do if you're a dissident. You, you make your bloody decision. And I've seen this. I, I just talked to Douglas Murray about this this week, you know, about because Murray is notable for his courage. And courageous people are actually quite rare, uh, much rarer than I even thought, even though I knew they were rare. I didn't know they were as rare as they are. But Murray says what he thinks, and to hell with the consequences, so to speak. But he was also convinced that there is no better path forward than saying what he thinks. And we took that apart to some degree. I mean, first of all, if you say what you think, what happens to you is your happening. If you engage in a lie, that's not you. God only knows what it is and what you're serving. So if you lie to get your way, it's not your way that you get. It's the way of the lie. And if you think that's a good idea, go try it. And then you think, well, what's your evidence that's a good idea? Have you ever lied to yourself and have that work? How about you lie to your intimate partner? You think that's going to work out? Or your family members? Or you lie to your business partners or your customers? That's going to work, is it? Who thinks that? No one thinks that. People will still do it and they'll pretend that it's okay, but no one with an iota of sense ever thinks that that 
No one says to their child, well, you know, son, the best way forward in every situation is to just figure out what the other person wants to hear from you and tell them. And if you can lie to get yourself out of a jam, well, what the hell? You might as well do it because that's what sensible people do. Okay, let me, uh, if I can make some comments about that. Um, yeah, so the journalists the asking Peterson in situations where uh, it appears hopeless, what should dissidents do? Why Jordan Peterson should be considered particularly qualified to answer this question? I don't know, but anyway, let's let's run with it and just sort of go through some of what he says. So, uh, yeah, he starts off um, drawing his... He starts off, first of all, dismissing uh, atheists' view of what they think faith is. And I think that he's sort of straw-manning atheists a bit here, although I admit that's a quibble. He's saying that atheists assert that faith is, meaning you believe in something which isn't there and obviously as an atheist myself that's what that's not what i say faith is for, in a religious context i say that it's uh, i say that it's believing in unverified propositions such as the proposition god exists uh, anybody who believes in that proposition it hasn't been verified if it had been verified we would all we would all accept it we would all be theists and so it's a matter of faith belief without uh, adequate evidence so okay so he's not talking about he's not talking about that kind of faith he's moving on to say that everything we do in life is a matter of faith i wouldn't use the word faith personally i would use the word uh maybe confidence or trust we trust in certain things by induction um, by having confidence in our ability to reason and make rational decisions. So I suppose that he moves on to say that uh, we have to act in spite of our ignorant, our ultimate ignorance. And maybe what he means by that, because he doesn't really fully explain it, is the idea that there is a God, there is something transcendent, tran transcendent which uh, we don't really know of properly and therefore we've got this ultimate ignorance because we've got a we, we've got a we've got an almost religious like faith in the tools that we use reason logic our senses to determine reality and proceed on the basis of assessing evidence to make what we think are the best decisions for ourselves so yeah so for me it's not a matter of faith i've got confidence in my tools not faith all right so he moves on from that to say that uh we need to have we need to live on the basis of a stable set of principles and for him the most important principle for a dissident and indeed in life is truth telling the truth so he makes he makes a number of claims in connection with this that i'd like to challenge so first of all he says truth is uh telling the truth is that whatever happens is the best that could happen uh, okay well he doesn't say from whose perspective the best for who if you're living in an author authoritarian regime and you're a dissident and you go to the authorities and you tell them the truth, what you think of the regime, etc., what you've done, how you've collaborated with other dissidents and who those dissidents are, who's it best for? Is it best for the dissident or maybe it's best for the authorities? So he doesn't really say from whose perspective perspective it's the best thing that could happen telling the truth he also says that the chickens always come home to roost on lies and that there's no evidence that 
a lie pays off in the long run. Well, I'd hate, I, I hate to contradict him uh, because I kind of believe in telling the truth as well. And I do believe in uh, honesty as a, as a principle for life. This thing that this assertion, this claim that the chicken, chickens always come home to roost on a lie or that lies, there's no evidence that lies pay off in the long run. We know that that claim uh, is not true because we've seen examples where lies have paid off. They've paid off in the long run. We've seen criminals who've been interviewed and they've lied. They've lied through their teeth and there's been no other evidence against them. So they've been acquitted or cases have not been brought to court. I know of cases. I'm not going to mention them here because I guess you all know of cases. And we know of cases where people have died and then it's later turned out that they did the crimes. But when they were interviewed by the police, they denied it. They told lies and they never had to pay for their crimes. So we know it's not true. We know that this claim is not a 100% uh, guarantee. A lot of the times, yeah, the chickens do come home to roost on a lie, but not always. And if you think about what dissidents are doing in certain countries, they're opposing uh, repugnant, violent regimes. And these dissidents are being encouraged or told to always tell the truth by somebody like Peterson, who's sitting in his, I don't know, two million pound, two million dollar penthouse in wherever he lives, uh, watching the money roll in and living in luxury, living in a, a liberal democracy where freedom of speech is protected. And he's advising dissidents to come clean in their own countries. And I'm not so sure that it's always the best idea. There are so many different types of dissidents in so many different contexts. It strikes me that to, to generalize on principles and say you you should always tell the truth for the best possible outcome is maybe not the best possible advice. I can think of an example. Imagine Russia, where it's a crime to burn the Russian flag. Imagine that I'm a dissident in Russia. I'm against the regime and I'm in a demonstration. I burn the Russian flag. Later on, somebody reports that by hearsay, I was seen burning the Russian flag and I'm arrested. But there's no, other, there's no other evidence against me except this hearsay. There's no eyewitness testimony. They can't find any witnesses. And the only evidence they've got is if I confess. Now, should I take Jordan Peterson's advice and confess and tell the truth and trust that the best thing that could happen, will happen as a result of telling the truth. Should I trust to that? Or should I perhaps maintain my right to silence and say nothing, not give evidence to the authorities, not have to go to prison for five years because I disobeyed an unjust law? So what should I do? What What is for the best? Would it serve any purpose for me to spend five years in prison for burning uh, the Russian flag? Or should I perhaps either lie or say nothing and not give evidence to the authorities? So there are so many different contexts for dissidents, so many different situations uh, that I would not want to presume to tell dissidents what they should do, to lay down the law that they should tell the truth. I would not want to preach such a message. And I'm surprised to hear Jordan Peterson of all people preaching to tell the truth because the chickens don't come home to roost. I'm surprised at him of all people who is continually intellectually dishonest. You can't get a straight answer out of him on certain questions. And in addition to that, he, is, he has been demonstrably dishonest about certain things. For example, I'm going to post a link to an article, but he's been uh, dishonest about some propositions about laws that are being brought in to protect uh, gender identity. And he's claimed that teachers 
under this law would be jailed if they used incorrect pronouns in a school environment, even if it was by accident. He has actually made that claim. And I can't believe that a man of his intelligence would not have known that that is not the case and that it was a matter of sheer manipulative propaganda. Um, let's say anti-wokeism that he actually made that claim. And I believe that uh, it's as bad as a lie, the ignorance, the level of ignorance, if he didn't know it was the case. I find it hard to believe that a man of his intelligence wouldn't have actually known what the case was. And whether it was hyperbole, um, I don't know, but I do believe it was dishonest and that for him, of all people, to preach to dissidents around the world in countries where people could lose their lives for telling the truth. I find absolutely preposterous and shameful. Okay, well, that's about it. Um, let me know what your comments are, if you've got any. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll be back again with another video very soon. Bye for now.